I will now call on Mr Chair Buckley to make his opening remarks. Thank you, Chair. And I'd like to thank uh, the Chair and the members here for the opportunity to address you today on what we believe is an essential piece of legislation, uh, because uh, we're dealing with this problem over the last 10 years, and in fact, uh, you're both joint houses of the, of, of the Oireachtas commissioned a report, a three-year report, uh, which was published in 2015 probably one of the most comprehensive studies into flood insurance and uh, I'll be using part of that report in our presentation today um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate um, the, the members of the House that contributed to this report because it is, it is, it is an extremely uh, good document and very, very comprehensive with a huge amount of uh, um, groups and uh, stakeholders uh, uh, feeding into this document. So the Irish National Flood Forum is a voluntary group set up by three people in Skipperine uh, in 2010 um, <coughs> as a result of flooding in the town of Skipperine. And we're a charitable organisation, we work on a voluntary basis, and we try and build a community flood resilience which enables communities to achieve better flood alleviation and reach their full economic and social potential, returning hope where once there was none. And we like to engage with the local authorities and stakeholders and all government agencies in a respectful way. Um, and that's key, and that's, that's our motto, if you like, and that's, that's, the, that's our modus operandi. Uh, just to try and paint the, the picture uh, for you today with regard to the flood insurance bill and why it's needed, I think it must be noted, and we're going to focus, we're going to drill down through some of the figures uh, that, uh, that are widely quoted out there by Insurance, uh, by insurance Ireland, and indeed by different government departments. And we're going to drill down through them, and Paul is going to show you exactly what's happening on the ground in areas where um, uh, towns have been flooded, but yet have, put, have major schemes uh, put in, but yet we can't get our flood insurance back. So the OPW has invested heavily in new flood defences in recent years. Clonmel, 40 more than a million, uh, invested and a scheme collect, uh, completed in 2013. From my 35 million of taxpayers' money spent, completed in 2014, and I would emphasise that the scheme in Fromoy was widely tested in the floods of 2015 and was extremely um, um, uh, uh, good, and there was absolutely no problems with regard to flooding in, 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 in 20, 2014 and 15. At Mallow, 39 million in 2014. So these three schemes alone amount to 115 million. And in all of these towns, there are massive issues when you actually go to the local areas, into the centre of the towns that are near the rivers, with homeowners and business owners getting, uh, getting flood insurance. It's just impossible. So 100 million is planned to be spent over the next five years. These schemes are being built to the international standard that Deputy Mayor McGrath has already stated. These schemes are some of the best schemes in the world. They're the newest schemes in the world. We now have got an agency, the OPW, that have a level of, uh, of expertise. Uh, we have a flood conference uh, in, uh, on Saturday in, in, in uh, Athlone, and we have experts from Holland coming, and we have experts from Scotland coming, and they view these schemes, and they, they, they say to us that they're some of the best schemes that they've seen in Europe, and yet we're having problems with getting in flood insurance in these towns. So despite such large investments of taxpayers' money, communities are still experiencing difficulties ex obtaining flood cover. In the above schemes, areas continue to remain blighted and in some cases insurance has actually been withdrawn after the scheme has been completed. We have instances of people losing their flood cover after a scheme has been completed. The INFF concern is that while OPW schemes bring high standards of physical protection, without changes in the level of flood insurance cover, societal res resilience will remain compromised. And the objective of the scheme is incomplete in spite of the OPW's level of, of, of technical ex excellence. And one of the things that we find is, and rightly so, there's a huge focus on schemes. We get the capital work schemes in. A community can wait for 10 years uh, to have a scheme delivered. And after all that time and all that level of expertise and all the money spent, we still can't get insurance. I think one of the major points that we want to make here today is the, there is no independent studies by government whatsoever with regard to the level of flood insurance cover. All data that government are using, um, uh, whether it be press releases or whether it be decisions made in the Department of Finance, are based on information that has not been independently verified. 
And the point I would like to make is it's not just the INFF saying this. If you look at the Irish Examiner of 2017, motor insurers being investigated for possible price fixing. If you look at the RT report on the 4th of July, Irish-based motor insurance is raided by the EU competition officials. And if you look at the report in, in the Sunday Times of the 2nd of July, insurance firms ordered not to lie. They're not me stating that. They are media outlets, very reputable ones, uh, that are putting to question the bona fides of the insurance industry with regard to the facts and figures that they're delivering. And yet we as a country are accepting their data without independent verification. I think, that's I think that's, that problem has got to be addressed. The INFF concerns property owners, farmers and small businesses. We really feel we're discriminated against because we pay our full rates. We pay our property tax. We pay our inheritance tax. We continue to wait for our flood schemes. We get our flood schemes delivered and we still can't get our insurance back. So if you have a business and there's inheritance tax to be paid on it, and if you're in a town like Formoy and you can't get your flood insurance, how do you borrow the money to pay your inheritance tax? You can't. So what you actually do is you starve your business of capital to pay your inheritance tax or your rates, and therefore that affects your ability to invest in your business going forward. Homeowners, homeowners are unable to raise mortgages and loans and properties or sell their property. Business farmers can't expand and, because they can't borrow money to renovate. And this is a very important fact. New industry and new commerce are reluctant to invest in blighted areas. So if we're going to allow the current modus operandi, we're going to have a situation where we'll be, worrying, we'll be looking at our towns around Ireland where we've had flood schemes delivered, and indeed cities like Cork City, and we'll say, why aren't they thriving? Why aren't they thriving? The reason they're not thriving is they can't borrow money. Money is the fuel for future investment. It is the way, it is, it, it is a, a, absolutely, it's the petrol in the car that, that, that drives a business. You know, homeowners were talking about, well, look, there's a huge lack of housing in this country. Wouldn't it be great if, if, if elderly people who are living in a large house could trade down and young people could buy a new house? It's obvious, absolutely, we don't be all for that. But you could have an elderly person in Formoy or Mallow or whatever that wants to downsize, but they can't sell their house because the young people that want to buy their house can't borrow because they can't get a mortgage because there's no flood insurance. Insurance refusals are, are a huge issue and they're not based scientifically. Uh, we have a situation uh, where under the CFRAM study, Insurance Ireland are getting, operate, are, are getting information from the OPW, and rightly so, where there's a, an exchange of information, and we would hope that that exchange would lead to a, a, a building of trust, and, but also an expectation that insurance companies will actually play, up, play their role. But they're not. If you're, less than, if you're 500 metres from a river, it doesn't matter whether there's a scheme there. No matter how strong it is, they're refusing cover. There is no account of topography. So you could, you, could, you could have a river that's, that's 100 yards from your house, but you, could, might be up, you might be up the hill maybe 100 feet, but you will be refused cover. There is little or no account taken into, in, into, uh, uh, of new, new flood defences taken into account. <coughs> the lack of transparency. And when we talk about lack of transparency, I, I, I'll be referring to this document a lot uh, in, 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 on, on the next slide. We have instances of insurance companies retaining claims, partial claims. We have instances of failure to advise claimants that they can appoint their own assessor. So we have insurance companies, for example, you have a problem in Mount Melick today, insurance companies will appoint their own assessor. They won't necessarily tell the individual who's been flooded that in their policy they have the right to have an assessor appointed on their own behalf, but they won't tell them that which is in breach of, of the consumer, uh, of, of consumer protection rights. And these concerns uh, are, are, are echoed in this document. And I would encourage all members to have a look at this document because it's, 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 a, it's a fine piece of work, but what I'm afraid of is it's going to be left on a shelf and not, you know, and, and not uh, dealt with. So the Joint Committee on Environment and Culture and the Gaeltacht Report on the 2015 study, which is this study, is this three-year study into the lack of flood insurance. If after examining the various models no solution can be reached, the State could consider the merits of introducing legislation which would compel insurance providers to provide insurance to everyone. 
and that is as stated uh, in this actual document. After the three-year study and all the findings, the, the, the committee came to that finding. And what we're saying is, if you go back here, this was published in 2015, so the, the, the work on this started in 2012. And we're saying, we're, that's 2012, we're now 2017, and the situation if, has not improved in, in the centre of towns. And what we're saying is, that's why we need uh, Deputy McGrath's bill. The INFF extended, uh, it contends that all potential solutions have been exhausted. The report was comprehensive and three years in the making, and the report has been published for two years. The OPW's best efforts to deal with this issue through the remember, Memorandum of Understanding process is, is in operation for three years plus. And I'm not going to start reading from the report, but I just want to extrapolate some of the key points that were made in the report, which back up what the INFF are saying. It's not just the Irish National Flood Forum that are, that are saying this. There's some eminent people who fed into this report. And, uh, and uh, the, the Joint Doctors' Report of 2015 noted that the OECD uh, stated, it's important to identify uninsured populations and sectors of the economy that are financially vulnerable and assess the reason why there is lack of insurance. That has not happened. Ms Josephine Feely, the former chairperson of the Revenue Commissioners at a hearing to the Public Accounts Committee on 21st of the 2nd, 2013, said that flooding will impact on property tax valuations. So the state is actually exposing itself to a risk of property tax actually, you know, under the, at the next round of self-assessment where people will say, well, hold on a second now, I'm paying full property tax, I don't have flood insurance, obviously my house is seriously devalued, therefore I should be able to put in a lower valuation and that will affect property tax returns. Insurance refusals, I've already spoken about the geocoding and the topography. Uh, inequitable claims. Uh, there's an eminent person, a, 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 a Mr. Raymond Downey, who's former chair of the Irish Claims Consultants Association, and he asserted in, in, in the Joint Committee uh, uh, report of 2015 that there was a lack of transparency. Mr. Downey alleged that insurance companies retain part of agreed claim settlements incorrectly. The retention practice is not evident abroad. Uh, having examined uh, the retention practice is not evident in Belfast or Bristol. Mr Downey also alleged that insurers have ignored the Consumer Protection Code by not advising homeowners who they notify a claim of their right to retain their own representative. That's actually stated in this report. What Eamon stated was actually confirmed by the Central Bank in their investigation, which is again in this report. And the Central Bank reviewed 108 flood, 188 flood claims and it found the following, incidents of potentially unfair settlements, a lack of transparency by insurance companies with retaining partial claims, as Eamon has already said, and a failure by insurance companies to advise claimants that they could appoint their own assessor. Exactly, we are, the central bank actually backing up with the former president of the Irish, broker, of the Irish uh, Claims Consultants Association stating. Our own Kildare, Kildare County Council have stated in this report that despite the council having delivered a scheme, that insurance is still not available in that area. If you go to St. Vincent de Paul, you know, people, not a commercial enterprise, but people that understand people that are, that are, that are living in disadvantaged areas. Mr. Dempsey, the committee, told, uh, told the committee that St. Vincent de Paul believes the lack of flood insurance can only be addressed through legislation. All it said in this report. Irish Brokers Association, they reckon that there's over 50,000 households have no flood insurance cover, despite this famous 98% statistic being trotted out by the insurance companies on a regular basis. Now, the Irish National Flood Forum is a small organisation but and done on a voluntary basis. But uh, one, of our, uh, one of our member groups in Ballinasloe carried out a local audit on a scheme in Derry Mullen, where 1.2 million was spent in flood defences in 2011. And out of 130 houses, they found 60 homes still without flood insurance. And you can see a picture there of the flood defence wall. There's no demountables on it. The only thing is that there's one gate in it at, at, at a stage along the wall. But that wall has protected Derry Mullins since 2011. There's never been a breach. And still, since 2011, we're in 2017, 60 homeowners can't get flood insurance there. So I think I've said enough. I am, I'm going to pass over to, to, to Paul Kavanagh, but I would, I would 
I would plead with members here and with the house, both houses of the Oireachtas, please support this bill. It is badly needed. Thank you.